beat George LeBlanc. So today he'll try and make it three in a row in the semifinals as he faces one of the regulars here on Stars and Strikes from Hopedale, Massachusetts, Paul Berger. Okay, and Paul Berger comes in averaging 125, high single 220, high triple 500. Wow, that is really something. Not many, we talked about not many people with 200 singles. Likewise, not many with 500 triples. All right, we've got a bonus ball contest coming up at the end of the hour that's worth $100. Our brand-new triple strike pool that we started this season goes up another $50 today. That'll be worth $350 should somebody put together a triple strike today. We'll be back with the first of our three games between Jack Ray and Paul Berger right after these messages. Campbellton Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash, choose your dream. It's been all Jack Ray so far coming up from that number five spot. He beat George Ashley two weeks ago. Last week he beat Glenn LeBlanc. Today he faces our number two seed, Paul Berger. The winner of this match today will move into the finals next week against Tom Morgan. And of course the winner of that match next week moves into the Tournament of Champions, becomes our first qualifier. Jack Ray. I'll tell you, any one of these fellows is a, certainly a great addition to the ninth annual Tournament of Champions. Yeah, this was a pretty impressive uh, ladder to start the season, really these was. five guys. Well, 7-10 for Jack to start off with. Oh, great effort. He wanted it to. By his reaction, he hit it right where he wanted to. Moved the piece of wood in front of the seven pin, got the 10, but just wasn't enough to carry the seven. Take a look at this, catches the wood right at the end, and flips it right in front of the seven. Jack Ray in the first two weeks that he's been here, wow. Gets the strike. Didn't I know what, you, me, I know what you're going to say, and that's why. <laughs> <laughs> you go, you can pocket. finish your thought now. <laughs> I was going to say that in the last two weeks, Jack has averaged 137.3 in his six games. And again, that's why. Well, Paul Berger starts with 7-10. But his wood's a little more favorable than Jack Ray's was, but still not an easy shot. Paul's last visit here was back in February of this season, February of this year, I should say, and he just misses on the 7-10. Paul beat Kevin Davis back on February 11th and then February 18th in a ladder championship match, lost to Tim Lipke. And as a result of that loss, Paul missed qualifying for the Tournament of Champions for the first time in eight years. He had been in the first seven Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions events. So he's trying to start a new streak, but he's going to have to win two in a row in order to get there this time. He's looking at the 3-6. Piece of wood right next to the 3-pin. No problem. Paul was telling me before the show, Dan, that he's not bowling quite as much as he used to in years past. Jack, Jack Ray on the strike. Looking for the double. He's himself the three and seven. Piece of wood behind the three pin is angled toward the seven pin. So, got to think if he hits the three, he's got a chance of making it. Oh, yeah. Great shot. Spare on strike for Jack Ray. Worth another look on the three and the seven. Ball actually takes the seven pin. Jack with wins the last two weeks. Now has his uh, overall record here on Stars and Strikes up to five and seven. He's starting to throw some of those scores that he used to get beaten by <laughs> up in the 400s. This to try to go three marks in a row. Oh, oh yeah. boy. I think he might have been a shade far left on that, but it was enough. Watch it kick forward on the head pin. Another one takes off behind it. Clears out the nine pin. Three marks in a row. Paul Berger on a spare. And he'll take seven. Triangle, five, eight, nine left for Paul. Trying to start a streak of his own. 
No. The object pin, but flush on the five, drove it right straight back between the eight and nine. Nine box for Paul. Paul from Hopedale, Massachusetts. He and his wife Paula have two sons, Damon and Alex. Paul works as the director of purchasing at Stratus Computer. And there's a strike. First strike for Paul Berger today. Talk about Paul's two sons. I remember when they used to come here and, and watch Dad take a day off from school. Now he tells me that uh, Damon is a sophomore at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. So. <laughs> How time flies. Jack Ray with a seven on his spare. And I shouldn't leave Alex out. Alex is a freshman now in high school, so. Isn't it great that the kids get older and we don't? It's amazing how it works. Yeah, it's amazing. Seven pin drop and Jack spare trying to go four in a row, and he does. Strike in the second, followed by three consecutive spares. Well, I think what's more amazing, Dan, is that, you know, we've been on the air here on Stars and Strikes for 13 years, and I don't think people realize how young we were when we started. I mean, we were only in our late 20s now, so. Right. Well, boy, that's, <clears throat> I had a feeling a zing was coming at me there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doug. <laughs> I said, oh, here it comes. But you're, of course, you know, this opening ladder series of the new season, you're kind of kind. <laughs> you, you'll catch up. <laughs> Oh, oh that close. Wow, that close to five in a row for Jack Ray. They like, uh, they don't keep those tapes, right? They get rid of them, right? <laughs> I mean, How much is it worth to you wow. to get rid of them? <laughs> That'd be kind of scary bringing one of those back. <laughs> a near miss here, Jack Ray going for five, five marks in a row. Paul Berger working on a strike. Remember that new strike pool we have available to the bowlers? It is up to $350 right now. That for a triple strike, of course, and it goes up $50 every week, up to a maximum of $2,000. Paul Berger will take the spare, though, on his strike, converting the four horsemen. Candlepin Stars and Strikes brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash, choose your oh. dream, Tri-State Megabucks. And Paul Berger's dream coming true there with the kick out of the extra pin. Yeah, the three, four, and six, and a piece of wood came from nowhere and knocked the four pin down. Much easier spare leave, and he converts that. I don't know, does it look to you like Paul's taking much time off? It doesn't to me. No. <laughs> If he doesn't tell any of my league bowlers that he doesn't bowl as much, <laughs> might all think that's the trend. I think everyone should bowl in three or four leagues. Absolutely. Yeah, keep sharp. <laughs> Jack Ray off target. Just missing the head pin. Or he would have had the spare. And take the 10. 98 through 7. Jack Ray is a sales rep for Marjam Supply. He and his wife Kelly have two children, six-year-old Jessica and two-year-old Mitchell. Neither one of them is in college or high school yet, <laughs> but it won't be long. One in 10 pins left for Jack. Yes. Yes, is very well done. You can see the replay, just cutting the head pin, and head pin makes contact with a couple pieces of wood to clear out the 10 pin. Got a feeling neither of these bowls want the other one to run too far ahead. Well, Berger off target, but a decent drop of just the one and the two pins left for an eight on the spare. Looking for his fourth mark in a row. Looks pretty good, and he's got it. <laughs> got a little scary there on the way by. Well, Jack threw four in a row, two through five, and now Paul comes with four in a row, four through seven, and he'll be working on a spare as he swings over to lane 31. 
The runner-up today gets $250 for finishing third in the series. The winner comes back next week for a chance at $1,000 and the spot in the Tournament of Champions. And Paul's going to study this one, the three, seven, and nine with wood. Well, your first choice is to play the wood in front of the seven, but I don't think he can cover the three pin when he does that. And I think Paul's thinking the same thing. How am I going to get that three pin? He's going to take a look, but I don't think he can cover it. If he goes at the three pin in that piece of wood, I don't think he can cover the seven. So he's got a tough choice. Paul has just taken the lead in the match for the first time. Went as far left as he could, and he's hopping, jumping, <laughs> and it won't happen. Well, if body English counts for anything, he would have made yeah, it. That would have been over, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He knew he needed some kind of comebacker to clear out that three pin. So that ends the mark run at four in a row. It gives him a 10 pin advantage. However, Jack Ray has got the fill the spare already posted, so. Boy, he got a tap on that yeah. wood there. The two pieces of wood came together, almost brought him the spare, but not quite. Now Jack lost that one to the left. He didn't even watch it. Didn't even watch it. Just four. Each bowler with five marks to this point. Nine for Jack, with one box to go here in game one. Don't forget, next weekend, more great Candlepin action here on the Winds of New England. Saturday at noon, it'll be Candlepin skins from Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill. Ouch. Hello. The one and the eight pins. How does that happen? And then, of course, next Sunday at noon, we'll have our first series championship match of the year. It will be Tom Morgan against the winner of this match today. And a nine for Jack for a 130 opening game. A little under what he's been averaging here over the last three weeks. And streaks there. Jack had it going early in the match, and midway through, Paul had it going. And Paul now the last two frames, and opposite two open frames by Jack. Look out. Oh. Boy, you know, and Paul might have had a strike on that first ball, Dan. He had a piece of wood coming over toward the triangle, and another piece blocked it. And now, not only did he not get the strike, he winds up with a nine box. So let's say he's going to have the lead. How many? Well, depends what he does in this last frame. The one, two, nine, and ten with wood. And the wood's pretty favorable, at least for the ten pin. Oh, missed the head pin, though. Missed the head pin. So he'll have the lead, but he'll be in s single uh, digits. Well, Jack Ray trailed by 22 pins after one game last week before coming back to win. This week, he'll trail by seven after one game. Paul Berger, 137 to Jack Ray, 130. We're back with game two in a minute. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola Classic. Always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. A nice round figure in our bonus ball contest today. We like when those nice round figures come up. $100 up for grabs at the end of today's show, and you can only win it if we have your postcards in the big barrel. And, of course, you've got to send them in and include your name and your address and the number from 1 to 10 at the end of each show. Our winning bowler throws one ball. That's the bonus ball. If the number of pins that drop on that ball match the number on your card when we draw it out, then you win the jackpot. Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. That's how it works. We were absolutely snowed under with mail during the summer. Yeah, it was Biggest amazing. amount of mail we've ever had, and I... 
can only assume that that has something to do with the fact that we've added an awful lot of cable systems, uh, particularly in Massachusetts, but some others in New Hampshire as well, and uh, I believe some in Maine, too. So if you're uh, a recent new viewer to uh, the winds of New England and to uh, our candle pin action here, we're glad to have you along. Hope you can be with us every Saturday and Sunday at noon for candle pin action here on the winds of New England. Paul Berger starts game two with a nine and now a nine drop. And an eight pin left with uh, quite a bit of lumber out in front here. Gets it. That was the first nine drop of the day for either bowler. Well, Jack Ray will start on the 32 the second game. Trailing by seven. Great pocket hit. Leaves the 10 pin. And the spare. Both of these guys so accurate. That's six marks apiece now. And the score reflects that closeness. A lot of respect between the two bowlers, too. They, they know the talent each of them are facing, and they can't afford to make any crucial mistakes, like missing nine-pin drops for spares. And, and then you have to make a few of these. <laughs> a two, four, and six. With no wood. Let's see. Nope. Well, Jack actually grabbed the lead briefly with that seven fill on the spare in the first, but now he will give the lead back up to Jack Ray, or rather to Paul Berger, presumably on this uh, spare fill. It's a good bet he might take the lead again. And he'll have similar shot opposite side, three, six, seven. Actually a little easier because the seven pin is a little further back. And mm. he goes by. Paul a little upset with himself on that one. Didn't really give himself a chance to make it. And he evens this game up after two boxes, so he regains his seven-bit advantage he had in the first game. Paul with a thin hit, but he drops eight. And he'll have a shot in the mark here. Did a lot of damage there when the pin's sticking around and sliding back and forth and knocking a few of their friends down. Two and seven left, going by the two pin. Well, two boxes in a row, Paul missing the object pin on the spare attempt. Nine box, pair of nines for Paul Berger. Well, chance for Jack Ray. Trailing by seven. Boy, we were talking about uh, our number one seed, Tom Morgan, a moment ago, Dan. He is just tearing it up over on the Skins show on Saturdays. Tom will be back for his fourth straight week this coming Saturday. So it could be a big weekend for Tom Morgan. He, he'll be on skins on Saturday, his fourth week in a row. And then next Sunday, he'll bowl here on Stars and Strikes for a series championship. And, and to think, several weeks back, he almost didn't come back. He That's needed right. a, a double strike. He threw a triple the last box to beat out Dave Richards and continue on. And then he's been on fire ever since. Jack Ray, Brooklyn pocket. That seems to be his favorite pocket to hit. Leaves the six pin. Couple of testy little pieces of wood out in front, though. He wants to avoid them if he can. Yeah, he does. He's got it. Well, that should just about even this thing up by the time he fills that mark in the fourth. Tight match here, Jack Ray. And Paul Berger will be back with more from Park Place Lanes after these messages.
Paul Berger. Pretty impressive record here on Stars and Strikes. Absolutely is. That tournament of champion record is uh, unbelievable, though. Of eight tournament of champions, he's been in seven of them. Oh, great shot there. Made it look easy, but he had to negotiate a piece of wood out in front. Right there, not much room to get by. Of course, Paul is a very modest guy. Every time we talk about that incredible uh, tournament of champions record that he has, he always is the first to point out that his record in those matches, those tournament of champions matches, is, is not what he would like it to be. He's only won the tournament once. once yeah. Well, I'll tell you, before you can even lose there, that's right. you have to get there. It's like getting to the Super Bowl. That's right. Nine box for Paul Berger. So he only gets 23 even with the mark in those two boxes. And Jack Ray threatening to retake the lead here in the match. Well, Jack pulled that one to the left. He's had somewhat of a problem with that over the three weeks he's been here. If he's made mistakes, it's usually been by pulling the ball left. One, three, seven, eight, and 10. Oh, there great effort. Oh, oh great short effort. pin. Great effort, though. Candle Pin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Here's the spare effort by Jack Ray. Might have been just a little thin on the head pin. Didn't get quite enough action off that left side wall. Jack pulls it left again. Oh, yes! From the back! I missed it. I saw the pin fall, but I don't know what knocked it down. A pin came from the back and knocked Let's it down. Take a look. Maybe the head pin. Yep. Right there. Wow. Ball thin hit, knocked out the 10 pin, which was a good break for himself. Leaves himself a spare leave. Two, five, seven, eight. Ooh. Ooh. Missed the object again. Only two strikes in this match so far, one by each bowler. In this game, uh, nobody's been able to put back-to-back -to -back marks together as yet. And as a result, things staying very, very close. It's been single digits most of the way in this one, back and forth. Berger goes open twice there in the seventh and eighth. And that will give Jack Ray a chance to retake the lead in the match. As you see, he trails by three overall in that lower left-hand corner. But the fill. On this spare will take care of that. He now leads by five. Well, seven and ten, but he's got a good angle in that piece of wood just to the right of center, left of center. Looks like he goes a red line. Plus the other piece on the right stops it, but looks like it's set up, and yeah. it is. Back to back marks for Jack Ray. Well done on the seven ten. Chance to extend the lead now, but Jack pulls it to the left once again, just five on the fill. The lead is 11. Look out, and it goes. Well, he threw a bad first ball, Dan, but the break was that most of the pins he knocked down stayed on the deck. 
And that helped him with the second shot. Well, it's been his forte the last few weeks. If he has a bad ball, he seems to recover the next. He need to make a good shot or get back into the box without creating a situation where he has a real bad frame. That's three marks in a row and five in this game for Jack Wright. And Paul Berger continues to struggle in this middle game. He'll take eight. 94 with a box to go. Oh, big break there, kicking out the four pin. Looked like he might have the four and the 10. Didn't seem right he had to wait for that four pin though, because that ball was buried in the one three pocket. And watch out for this wood now. Although right as it is now, he should have room to get by. And he's there, right on it. Great shot. Probably could have gotten away with clipping the wood, but. Well, maybe, you, you never know. know. Yeah. I always say if you can see the pin, play it. Eight marks for Paul Berger. Love to tack on a strike right here, and he does. Yes. 20 pins in the 10th. His second strike of the day. Just tripping the four pin, the last one to go down for that strike on spare. See Jack Ray working on his third consecutive spare. And he takes nine. 113 through eight. Another chance for a spare on the four pin. Yes. Well, he had four marks in a row in the first game. He's got four marks in a row again here in the second. Eleven marks overall for Jack. Again, left. Just a bit. Four horsemen to the right, though. One, three, six, ten. Trying to finish with five consecutive spares. Nope. Well, that's going to leave his lead under twenty. Entering the third game. A 137 for Jack, which is just about exactly what he's been averaging every game the last three weeks. 260, I make it a 139, I beg your pardon. 269 for Jack Ray, 251 for Paul Berger. 18 pins the lead and a third game upcoming when we come back. We are back on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and Jack Ray is in the lead by 18 as we start game three. And he starts with a spread eagle. Wow. Jack had one, has one strike in this match. It was back in the second box of the first game. Since then, he's had 10 spares no more strikes. He's trying to bail out here with his last ball. Works out for an eight. Eighteen pin advantage. Two marks, more likely three marks behind. On the head pin again, a little full again. This time with the three, four, and six. Oh, ooh, almost. He knew he had a shot at it. Gave it a good run. But more importantly for Paul Berger is that he's open the first two. 18 pins. And Jack knows 18 pin advantage is not very much against the likes of Paul. He would have loved to have put one or two marks up. Go, oh, uh, baby. That like was I quick. Said. Well, that's two strikes in a row for Paul. Unfortunately, they don't count as two strikes in a row. He threw one to end game two as a fill ball. 
And let's see. Still happening, still happening here. Wow. Well, it's a big break. I don't know how advantageous that wood will be. We'll have to see. Good enough. Spare on strike, and all of a sudden the lead is just six pins for Jack Ray, and that might be a race when Paul fills that spare you're just watching the replay on. Oh, and oh, Jack boy. punches the one, eight, and nine. Couldn't even steal the spread eagle. Left the five pin up there. Well, you've mentioned many times, though, that yeah. the shot may even be easier with, or That's it certainly right. is easier with the five pin in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Not if you don't hit one of the object pins. Though. Right, two or three. But that right there is an example, example. of why it's an easier shot. Yeah. Works it out for a nine. Good out there for Jack. That time the head pin flew right over the top. Never touched either of that, any one of those cluster of five that Jack is now facing. Three, five, six, nine, and ten. No. Oh, nice 10 box. Excellent. But an open frame. Get another look at that 10. Fine shot. Just caught the wood behind the five. Paul Berger ready to go. He is not wasting any time. Oh. And he drops nine on the spare. Two pieces of wood just went into the pit area right behind the 10 pin. Almost knocked it down for another strike. That's three marks in a row. And Paul has taken the lead in the match. Well, I just can't help but think that Jack Ray's got one more rush in him. So I'm sure Paul's thinking, I just got to keep marking. Nope. Not the ball he wanted that time. Just four. Almost. Well, that's going to leave this thing in single digits again as we come down to the last six boxes. A 10 for Paul Berger, 63 through four. He has taken the lead by eight in the match with six boxes remaining when we come back to Wyndham, New Hampshire after these messages. Well, here we go, final six boxes. Great match here in the semifinals. The winner to face Tom Morgan next week. Jack Ray rolling in the fifth box, looking at a spare leave on the three, six, and ten. Piece of wood that should help. Oh, boy. Oh boy. No, he turned away. He knew he lofted that one out further on the lane than he normally does. Pulled it to the left. Well, a missed opportunity there, and Jack still does not have a mark in this third game. That's the biggest thing. One thing, missing a shot, but knowing you haven't had a mark this game yet, and your opponent just put three up to gain the lead. Big momentum swing right there. And now back on the head pin for another punch out. That wood is pretty far out. What do you think? Play the wood? No, I think he's got to go ahead and three six and try to jump it over. Yeah, nope. Just trying, but missed his three pin. So he'll be open again in the sixth. That will be a nine box. Jack pinning pretty well, 56 through six, but he needs marks. Big opportunity for Paul Berger to get the lead into double figures. Oh, my. Well. This is getting more interesting by the minute here. Well, he had the split. He's trying to work it out to get the 10. Maintain an eight pin advantage. Well, loses Make one, so it'll be seven. I get seven.
Paul trailed by 18 coming into this third game. Now has a seven pin lead in the match. And again, an opportunity to get it into double figures if he should mark here in the sixth. And... <laughs> pin piece of wood is going to be out of play regardless. It looks like it may roll all the way out. It does. At the six pin for the spare. Big shot right there. Interesting there that Paul uh, waved off Cindy from going down. He knew it was going to be, and he didn't <laughs> want to wait. Just, I want that six pin. Cindy Sissom working the big scoreboard and handling the uh, pins on the deck for us, as always, here at Park Place Lanes. And Jack Ray is off to the left again. Yeah, Jack is struggling right now, whether he can get it together for this final four. Well, it's a pretty good ball there, but you can't leave six pins up there and expect to make the spare every time. Nine box. Well, I think if for no other reason than confidence level, Dan, that you were talking about earlier, he really needs a mark right now. Yeah, not knowing what Paul's going to do in his spare, this still could be in, in uh, single figures. There's that Brooklyn pocket hit, and it seems to work for him. Leaving the five. Couldn't be any better with that wood, too. A little confidence builder there, knowing he could miss it to the right and still make it. And he'll play it that way. His first mark of the third game is 12th mark overall. But he's only got two boxes left now, and he has to watch Paul Berger, who is already prepared to increase his lead on this spare fill. He'll add six. Well, could be worse as far as Jack Ray is concerned, but it still pushes the figures, uh, the lead into double figures. Four, seven, eight, and ten. Wood scattered everywhere. Interesting choices here. Oh, Paul oh, oh, I think he made that cleanly oh. without the wood. Wow. Watch him cut the four pin all the way across into the tent. Oof. Just like the wood wasn't even there. That might be the shot that wins him the match. Oh, or that one maybe. <laughs> well. Strike on spare. That one counts double though because it counts on that great shot of the spare in the box before and he fills it, and all of a sudden, the close match is ballooned to a 25-pin advantage for Paul Berger. Jack on a spare, but he needs strikes now. We saw it happen last week to Glenn LeBlanc, rolling along that first game, and then Jack, in this case, was two games, and then the third game, he missed a shot, he start to press, and all of a sudden, it just, uh, you just lose it. Lose the timing, lose the momentum you had. Jack will take a 10. The best he can do now is 121. And that would be with a triple strike. Paul Berger would not have to mark again in order to win the match. And that will do it. So Paul Berger and Tom Morgan next week for the series championship and the first qualifier into the tournament of champions. Seven for Jack and a 98. The one really bad game he has had in two weeks here, uh, three weeks. He had a 103 last week in the first game, but he bounced back with a 158 and a 150 in the last two games. But no answers today. 367 for Jack. Nine fill on a strike for Paul Berger. Paul has a chance for a 400 triple if he were to mark in the 10th. He needs a 149. He's at 136 right now. Of course, next week we'll be watching that. The winners total a lot closer than we are this week. Right. Because remember, that's how they're seeded the tournament of champions, how well they do winning the ladder championship. And Paul will not get 400, but he will get the win. And he will be back next week to face Tom Morgan. 
a 9, a 145, and a three-game total of 396. Paul Berger with a win. Terrific match against Jack Ray. We'll be back with both bowlers and for $100 in the bonus ball contest in a minute. Welcome back to Park Place Lanes. Big crowd enjoying this match and a terrific one it was in the semifinals, uh, Dan. We knew it was going to be uh, tough for Jack Ray to make it three in a row. Paul Berger has been here so many times and has put up so many big scores. Uh, both of these guys capable of putting up the big scores, certainly, but uh, Jack was never able to get going after that first game. Well, that's right. It's, it's whoever maintains that momentum the longest, and uh, today it was Paul. Tomorrow it could be Jack. You never know. They're both... Uh, great canopin bowlers and today's uh, Paul's day all right let's talk to both of them first of all Jack Ray come on up Jack actually uh, had that 137 average intact after the first two games today uh, you had it going in the first two but uh, not in the third a check for two hundred and fifty dollars for third place and uh, well you just had that the one bad game against somebody like Paul Berger he took advantage of it I thought somebody was supposed to put a one in front of that 98 <laughs> so that's the only way to be able to beat him but Paul bowl well you know he came back a couple times had a couple bad breaks and came right back and didn't stop so well, I hope uh, after you've been away a little over a year, year and a half or so, we'll come back and see us again soon, all right? I will, thank you. All right, that's Jack Ray. Congratulations, Jack. After two wins, uh, coming up just a little bit short today, Paul Berger, our winner, and Paul will now uh, try our bonus ball contest uh, on lane 31. We have an even $100 available. Dan getting ready to pull that postcard and see if you can pull a four, Dan. Paul, we were just talking about this. He says, you've been dr drawing a lot of fives. He says, people must know I'm coming on. <laughs> Paul was very, he wasn't worried about the match. He was worried about this part if he won. He hates this part. Well, I almost got it. Well, it's a postcard from Las Vegas, and we can't hate that. But the guess was five for Geraldine Kosnick, I believe it is. So for Geraldine uh, from Holbrook, Massachusetts, thanks for mailing in the card, and uh, you'll be getting a consolation gift from the NHCBA and from the Winds of New England. Congratulations, sir. It's, uh, it's good to have you back, and, uh, boy, you had to do it all in the, in the third game, but uh, you got it done. Well, I was fortunate. Uh, you know, Jack, uh, Jack's ball stopped working just a little bit, <laughs> and mine woke up. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I mean, it could have been just the other way around when we finished the, the second string. Uh, you yeah. know, he had me by 18, and uh, chasing a guy like Jack, you don't figure to win too many of those. All right, next week uh, for the series championship and a spot in the spring tournament of champions, Tom Morgan coming in. That should be a pretty good one. Yeah, one of the best, uh, both he and his brother. We've, we've, <laughs> we've, we've messed with each other before. <laughs> we only have to bowl one of them next week. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. All right, Paul, thanks very much. So are we. We'll see you next week. That'll be the series championship match uh, one week from today. That should be a dandy. Paul, Bor Paul Berger against Tom Morgan. Uh, with the three guys we had left, any of the matchups would have been good, but uh, this shapes up to be a terrific one. Well, people have been following the skin show on right. Saturdays. Uh, you know that... Uh, that um, uh, was, yeah, which Morgan is it? I get them all mixed up. Tommy is, is on fire, and, of course, Paul, you know the numbers he can put up, so it should be a great final. Well, it could be a great week uh, next weekend for Tom Morgan. He's going to be on the Skin Show on Saturday for his fourth straight week, and then he will be here on Sunday at Park Place Lanes to face Paul Berger for the series championship and that first spot in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Of course, the winner of that match will also get $1,000. Our triple strike pool will be up to $400 next week, so it shapes up to be a fun weekend. We hope you'll join us next Saturday and Sunday at 12 noon right here on the Winds of New England. Until then, for Dan Murphy and our whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody.